What's up guys? Now if you watched my video on Monday, the Ask Elvis video from Aberdeen, you'll remember that I was talking about my horrendous travel plans for the following day. Well, that was yesterday. Today, I'm in Marrakesh. And it was all worth it. Check this place out. Amazing hotel, amazing location. I'm gonna head down there because I've got a couple of hours before I have to go to work. I'm gonna head down there for a run. One of the things that was really interesting for me about that video that I did on Monday was when I asked you lot to tell me what your dream cars were and obviously as you always do you responded in your hundreds uh, loads of people telling me what their dream car was and what was interesting about that I thought that struck me was what a range of different dream cars people have how how different different people dream and then it got me on to thinking about people's dreams in general and you know for me my dream certainly as a, as a teenager growing up my dream single-minded focus was all about getting to my dream of working in Formula One. That was my dream job. You know, I couldn't think of anything else during that period of my life other than trying to get into Formula One because for me it was the most exciting thing in the world. It, would have been, it was like winning the lottery for me. The day that I got the call from McLaren to say I'd got the job, I mean, I cannot even begin to describe how that felt. It, it literally felt like, well, all my dreams had come true. I know that everyone's dreams are different and absolutely they should be otherwise the world would be a pretty boring place but you know my dream was that was getting into Formula One and I was prepared to go to pretty much any lengths to get to it and people that's the other thing people are prepared to go to different lengths to achieve their dreams now I know that lots of you have the same dream as me lots of you would love to have worked in Formula One or still would love to work in Formula One I know that because lots of you write to me on a regular basis asking for advice and help and uh, and support in that, which I'm more than happy to give. The point is, when I got to Formula One and got my dream job, those dreams all came true. There was a stark reality once I got there of, my goodness, this is hard work. Now, there was never, ever a complaint. I don't think, I'm sure somebody out there will pick me up on this, but I don't think I have ever complained about working in Formula One, about having my job, because it was my dream job. In fact, I turned up at McLaren often to my surprise to when I first started there that some of the people, some of the old school guys that had been there forever were moaning about their jobs, they were complaining, they were moaning about conditions, they were moaning about certain things and I used to think, what are you moaning about? This is the most incredible job in the world and that was the feeling that I carried all the way through until the day that I left. The reason I'm waffling on about all of this is that I saw a comment uh, this week from Jean Todd which got me a little bit enraged in response to concerns from various parts of Formula One of, of Formula One's industry about the expansion of the calendar to as many as 25 races uh, as is planned at some stage by Liberty Media John Todd our supreme leader of the FIA said that people who work in Formula One are privileged to do so and should stop moaning and shut up and get on with their jobs and be happy about it. <sighs> the reason that it makes me so angry is probably not the reason you think. So before you all jump on your keyboards and start complaining, telling me he's right, you know, if you don't like it, walk away. In fact, I bet some of you have already done it, haven't you? <laughs> some of you have already been on the comments. Put your hands up. <laughs> so instead of saying, look, he's already, you know, he's absolutely right. You can walk away from the sport if you don't like it. You have a choice to be there. If you don't want to be away from home, 
then move over, give someone else a try. Look, this is not a video about me complaining about the working conditions of, of Formula One mechanics and engineers, etc. It's not a video about complaining about having too much time away from home or any of those things. Look, I've worked all sorts of hours. When I got into Formula One, we were doing 18, 20 hour days on the test team as standard. That was normal. We'd finish work at two, three o'clock in the morning. And that was normal, that wasn't extreme, that was the norm. And then we'd be back in again at seven to start again. The Australian Grand Prix, the first race of the year, it wasn't uncommon to go right through the entire night inside the garage, desperately trying to get your car ready. And then later that day, you'd be, without having had any sleep or a shower or anything, you'd be performing pit stops during a Grand Prix. But you know, when I was doing those things, you know, I wasn't complaining, I wasn't moaning about them, I was actually really proud of what we were able to achieve under those conditions. It was one of the things that for me made Formula One's elite stand out because we could deliver under extreme pressure, under, you know, extreme conditions, time constraints. With all the things that were up against us, we still managed to perform and deliver excellent. That's not to discount the fact that people are having to spend a lot more time away from home than they were 10 years ago. You know, on the other hand, people are not doing 20 hour days regularly anymore. So there's a balance to be had at the racetrack. We've now got curfews which prevent people staying there all night. So, you know, there's swings and roundabouts about what it's like as to as, as working, what working conditions are like inside the Formula One pit lane. I'm not here to moan or judge about any of that. Every individual will have their own case, their own viewpoint on that, and that's absolutely fine. If it is too much for you, then yes, that's absolutely fine and understandable, and perhaps you can find a way to deal with that, like I did. When it wasn't right for me anymore, when it's, I'd achieved what I wanted to achieve, when I had got to a point where it no longer suited my family life and my lifestyle, I walked away. But the world has moved on. Formula One has moved on. And that is why Jean Todd's comments are so old, so outdated, so ill-informed. You know, he's a leader. He's a leader of our sport. And yet that, what he said, is on page one of the things not to say in the leadership rule book. Yes, 22, 25 races for some individuals could well be just too much. It might not be what they signed up for in the beginning. It might be over the tipping point that means they can no longer sustain their work and their family life, for example. And they're all genuine concerns. You can't just brush those aside with a flippant comment, not take them seriously. But even more so than that, even if John Todd has no interest in taking those things seriously, has no interest in the well-being of the individuals that keep this show on the road, well, the teams, the teams that employ them, they absolutely have to. They've got no choice. They have a duty of care to those people. People like Mercedes, under the leadership, the great leadership of Toto Wolff, have built this incredibly successful team, not by making comments like that, not by treating your staff and saying, if you don't like it, get out. Toto Wolff is a great example of a leader who treats his, his staff as individuals, who looks as every single individual and finds the strengths and weaknesses. He finds ways to support the problems that they might be suffering with or facing. He finds ways to accentuate their strengths. And then he builds a team around all of those individual characters. Toto Wolff cannot ignore the concerns of members of his staff who might be suffering away from the racetrack. Their well-being, their health, their mental health could be suffering as a result of the workload that's now imposed on them. He can't brush that to one side. He's got to take it seriously. Now, for Toto Wolff and any other Formula One team in that situation, if they've got to take that seriously, they've got to look at new ways of doing things. Perhaps it might mean a second team that can be on rotation over the course of a season to give people a break. But of course, that costs loads of money. At a time when the sport is all about saving money. Formula One is a, a science and data-led industry. And the science and the data tells you that people perform best when they are healthy and fit and well, when they're happy, when they're relaxed, when they feel like they are being valued as members of your particular team or organisation. The science tells you that people perform worse when they're not happy, when they are stressed, when they are tired, when they're overworked. It's just facts. And with Formula One being a performance-led industry, 
Every team has to find the best way to maximise their performance in every single area. It's exactly why I'm here today in Marrakesh to talk to a big, um, a big organisation within the automotive industry about exactly that, how Formula One does these things so well. And yet, a couple of days ago I'm reading that our leader has a very different viewpoint. So that's what this video is about. That's why I'm angry. I'm angry because the guy who should be leading thousands of people towards this state of absolute excellence, something that's a showpiece for our industry, for the rest of the world. The guy in charge of all that, leading the way, has just said something that could be so demoralizing, so heartbreaking for so many people in this sport, that it's hardly going to inspire people, first of all, to want to get into Formula One, but equally those who are already in it, to do the best job they can. cheery note, I've now got to go and talk to around a thousand people on why they should look to Formula One for leadership lessons. <laughs> but listen, I'd love to know what you think on all of this, because this is not just a question of asking how far would you be prepared to go to live your dream, to have the job of your dreams. For some of you that might be Formula One. How much sacrifice would you be willing to make or put up with? For some of you it would be lots. For me, I'd have done whatever it took. But that was a long time ago. Things were very different. The actual point of this video, the question that this video should end with really is, how does Formula One continue to be an incubator for the best of the best, the elite, in every single profession within our sport, within our industry? Because that's what Formula One is. It's this group of people who are the very best at every single thing that they do. And I guess, of course, we can achieve that over 25 races. We could achieve it over 40 races if we wanted to. Formula One is one of the best industries at dealing with whatever challenges are thrown at them. But my point is that what we can't do is do that in the way we used to do it 20, 30 years ago. If we're going to do that, we have to adapt, we have to change, we have to find new ways of doing things. And unfortunately, Jean Todd's view, where we should all just tell our staff and tell the people involved in the sport, that they just got to go and get on with it, that's no longer applicable in this modern world. <laughs> <laughs>